Welcome everyone, it's Mayor Garcia and we're here to give another update for the city of Long Beach as it relates to uh, COVID-19. Uh, these updates are given every Monday, Wednesday and Friday at 3 p.m. Uh, once we go through our update, it's also repeated in Spanish and Espanol. Um, and I wanna thank um, those that are here today. Uh, we have uh, a couple folks, of course we have Paola who does our translation for uh, ASL and sign language. Uh, we also have um, with us today Leslie, who's going to be doing our translation uh, in uh, in Spanish at the end, uh, and Sandy Wedgworth, who is our Health Department Emergency uh, Management Director, who's going to give a couple updates on some of the really great things we're doing as it relates to uh, rapid response and, and health. I uh, want to just begin by welcoming everybody. Uh, the City of Long Beach and the health on our Health Department is working really, really hard with all of our partners uh, on our COVID-19 uh, response. Uh, as of right now, uh, we have uh, 230 confirmed positive cases in the city of Long Beach. That, of course, that number, as we know, goes up uh, every single day as we expect it to, uh, as more and more um, tests are being run and as more and more people uh, are positive. Uh, the, the, the good news of that 230 number is that about 70 of that number have actually recovered um, and have had a smooth recovery. And so you have 230 positive cases, but you also have 70 of that 230 that have positively recovered. And so from a Long Beach perspective, that's a good sign. We wanna see that number continue to go up and more and more folks recovering. Uh, we still um, have uh, the three deaths that we discussed, that number has not gone up since we last reported it. Very grateful for that. We should all be grateful to the medical personnel that are um, actively working uh, with those that are in the hospital right now uh, with COVID-19. Uh, many of them are, are, are struggling, but our prayers and our love, our thoughts are with them and their family and the medical personnel. We want every single one of them to pull through and we're thinking about them um, and we want to get all through this together. And so uh, that is the overall number of where we're at. You've probably read uh, or seen in the, in the news, um, and we talked a little bit about this last week, that we are starting to see more positive uh, infection rates at some of our senior uh, long-term uh, care facilities or nursing home facilities uh, in the city of Long Beach. Uh, we know that this is our most vulnerable population. Um, and there have been five facilities now across the city, all across the city, uh, where we are seeing some of these positive cases. Now, please know that we have an experienced team of health officials working with these facilities, working with all the facilities to ensure that we are minimizing risk to uh, other folks that live in, in, uh, at these centers, at these facilities, including the personnel and the staff that are there as well. And so we will continue to update uh, the media, the public, the more that we, that we learn. But again, we're up to 230 positive cases. Uh, I wanna share some, um, some really good news, I think, about what we're doing to prepare uh, for the surge in the weeks ahead. You've probably heard uh, everyone from uh, the governor here locally in California, through all of our officials, talk about this expected surge uh, within our hospitals that we're, that we're gonna have in the next few weeks. That is the same case here in Long Beach. We're preparing for that. And so what are we doing? You know that we have um, five hospitals that are part of our system here in the city uh, that are actively ready, preparing for the surge. I've mentioned to you that three of those hospitals, the health department has worked to set up expansion capacity tents at St. Mary's, at Memorial, at College Hospital to expand the capacity of these locations and the hospital rooms. You've also read that we've put in 100 beds at the Long Beach Convention Center to serve as an overflow hospital uh, as well. And we're actively ha looking for other sites. We'll have more to announce in, in the days ahead, but that is all in preparation for these next few weeks. We also um, discussed that we were going to be opening up this week and we have today uh, our new uh, rapid response clinic. Uh, this rapid response clinic is at Long Beach City College at the Pacific Coast campus. That is the campus on PCH. And you, you know, Long Beach City has two campuses, one in the eastern part of the city off of Carson and of course the one on PCH. So um, 
uh, Sandy's going to get into some more details about the clinic, but I want to give a little overview of what we can expect and why this is such a great thing for Long Beach. We opened up this clinic today, and I want to start by thanking the team at Long Beach City College for their amazing work. Uh, the new superintendent president, Luann Bynum, um, the president of the, bo of the, of the board, uh, Vivian Malulu, and the entire board have been really a team in working with the city to ensure that we open up this clinic. So what, what does this mean for, um, for, for, for Long Beach? Uh, the health department is working and has worked to put this amazing facility in place. First, it's free. And so there is no cost right now. It's a free clinic. It starts today. It's from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. We have already seen in just the hours it's been open today, over 50 individuals come to the rapid response clinic for health advice, um, for concerns about COVID-19, uh, to check up on uh, a health or medical issue. I want to be very clear about this clinic, that whether you have insurance, whether you don't have insurance, uh, whether you are uh, undocumented, uh, whether you are any member of this community of our city, you have access to this clinic, and I want to make sure that all you know that it's available to you. And it's at Long Beach City College. We've already seen 50 people just today. This is going to alleviate tremendous uh, need of space at our hospitals. And so we want to keep our emergency rooms and our hospitals open. And so this clinic, you can drive up through your car to the campus and get a question answered. They can actually prescribe prescriptions for you. Uh, right there on the spot. They can also refer you to even a test if they believe you meet those testing requirements. And who is staffing this clinic? This is really exciting. It's the Long Beach Medical Reserve Corps. The Long Beach Medical Reserve Corps is a group of volunteer doctors, nurses, and medical staff that are through the Long Beach Health Department that have signed up to come back to work because they believe that they want to help our community. So I want to thank the Long Beach Medical Reserve Corps that are right now, as this is going on, staffing our new clinic at Long Beach City College. It's a group of amazing volunteer and medical professionals. So the clinic now is open. Please go by if you need health services. Um, and we have some of the best folks working there um, as we speak. And, and it's tied to one other thing um, as it relates to testing. I mentioned last week that we have been ramping up our testing in the city of Long Beach. Uh, we have already uh, established a drive-up testing center that is done at the health department by appointment only um, that's really focused on first responders, medical personnel, and appointments through the hospital. Well, the great news is that starting tomorrow, this rapid response clinic at Long Beach City College will have just adjacent to it a drive-through and drive-up COVID-19 testing site. Now, we have been working on this with our partners at the County of Los Angeles and the City of Los Angeles to ensure that this facility can open in Long Beach. So this would not be possible if it wasn't for the partnership at the City of Los Angeles and Mayor Garcetti and the partnership at the Board of Supervisors with the head of the board currently, Catherine Barger, and of course, our supervisor, Janice Hahn, here at the city of Long Beach. This testing center opens tomorrow at 10 a.m. and is just adjacent to the clinic. Now, how can the, how does this testing center work? Uh, the testing center works like all of the other county uh, drive-through testing centers, which is you have to go online and you can reach the testing platform through the longbeach.gov website. So if you go to longbeach.gov, and it's the site, the, the link's not up there yet. It will be up later tonight for tomorrow. But once the link is posted later tonight, it will take you to the platform that's been designed by the County of Los Angeles and the City of Los Angeles. So uh, you will, we will be using their platform just to make it easier so we can keep all the county information in one place. You can sign up through their platform. You can sign up uh, for the Long Beach location and you can go to any location across the county, by the way, but we, want, we know that Long Beach folks want to be in Long Beach and get, and get tested here in the city. So you'll be able to sign up for the Long Beach drive through Testing Center. And we expect um, really early on to start doing hopefully 100 tests a day, and that will hopefully ramp up over time at Long Beach City College. So again, thank you, Long Beach City College, and we're excited about this testing center. Now, remember that this testing center is just one of the ways you can get tested. 
And so there's a drive up testing center through the county LA partnership. There is the testing center we have at the health department that is by appointment only. And then of course your doctor, if you have a physician, they can prescribe you a test that could, you'll get directly at a testing site or a private or other public health facility. And the hospitals, of course, also will be able to refer certain types of testing. So people can receive testing many different ways. And I want to make sure that folks uh, know that as well. And so there really is good news today on both the clinic side and the testing side. Now I want to update folks on the um, conversation we've had around face coverings. Uh, as we've been discussing in the last few days, uh, the CDC has put out and Long Beach has put out new guidelines around face coverings, um, which essentially is asking folks that yes, if you are going out of your home and you have to travel for an essential reason, grocery store, uh, you're going out uh, to an appointment uh, with, uh, with a doctor or you, you are encouraged to wear a face covering that is out of, made out of cloth that you can make at home, that are homemade. But we, again, masks that are surgical masks or the special masks for medical personnel, those need to be reserved for personnel, for nurses, for frontline workers. But the homemade scarves, cloth coverings, uh, homemade type of face coverings, those are the ones that are being encouraged. And I had announced on Friday a partnership with the Long Beach Post. Uh, the Long Beach Post, of course, is a, uh, a media organization here in the city of Long Beach. They are launching and has now launched a digital e-commerce marketplace for Long Beach residents that connects individuals looking to purchase face coverings with individuals that are at home or have a business that are creating these face coverings uh, the, 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 the homemade masks that are being made here in the city of Long Beach. So if you go to shop.lbpost.com, that's shop.lbpost.com, you can visit this marketplace. It is just launching today. And so, of course, it'll be populated over the next few days. But if you're someone out there that's at home, and I see a lot of you on social media making, making face coverings at home, uh, you, you're, you're good at sewing, you're creative, you can now put those masks on the marketplace and help us get people that need face coverings, the face coverings that they need. And if you are someone that is looking for a, for a face covering, you can now go on this marketplace. It's a partnership with the city to be able to purchase these face coverings. To be, and to be clear, the Post isn't making any sort of commission from these sites, or it's not, they're doing this as a community service. And so uh, this is between the person that wants the mask and the person making them. Uh, and we're excited about this e-commerce marketplace for people in our community. Um, vendors and individuals can register and, 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 and sell and trade their products on this site. And again, it's shop.lbpost.com. And I want to thank the team there uh, for creating this um, and, and creating a place for us to be able to, uh, to, to have these um, back and forth. Uh, I also want just to give um, a couple other updates. One is um, as it relates to our stay-at-home orders. I want to remind individuals that stay-at-home means stay-at-home. It does not mean go out to a park and gather and have a picnic. That is not allowed. You are not allowed to gather. You are not allowed to go to an exercise class on the bluff. You are not allowed to be in a group of folks riding your bike together uh, along, along uh, a bike path. You need to stay at home if you're not an essential worker. What you can do is take a walk around your individual neighborhood. You can walk through your neighborhood park, but you cannot go to the beach. You cannot play on a playground. You cannot go on a soccer field and play soccer. You cannot go on a skate park. These are things that please respect the order. This is not just because I'm, I'm asking, it's because our doctors and nurses are asking us, they need our support in the weeks ahead. Please stay at home if you can and you're not an essential worker. In addition to that, we're getting some reports, and this is really uh, disappointing, that folks are leaving their used masks and or gloves on the street. 
And um, please, this is not, we should never be littering, but especially right now in this, in this health crisis, I mean, the minimum folks can do is do not litter anything. So certainly don't litter your gloves and masks in parking lots or on the street. Because that means that we, our city workers, that are working really, really hard right now, are having to go and pick up these additional masks and these additional gloves. And that is something, one, that uh, they don't have the time to do. And you are hurting your city, and you're, you're putting people in danger, and it's not acceptable. And most people are doing the right thing, so thank you. But there's a small percentage of folks out there that are doing the wrong thing. So please stop littering, especially all these gloves and masks. It's, it's just not acceptable. Just do, do the right thing for our doctors and nurses. And then I'm going to... Um, I'm going to end on a, on, a, on a good note. And then after this, I'm going to pass it over to Sandy. Um, uh, we reported this weekend that one of the positive stories coming out of all this is our animal adoption and foster rate. Uh, we have seen an unprecedented amount of support uh, to our animal shelter as it relates to fostering and adopting uh, cats and dogs out of the shelter. Uh, just recently, we've adopted out over 70 dogs, over 100 cats, um, just since March 13th. Uh, we have still um, a few dogs and cats at the shelter, but it's not many. And that's thanks to all of you and the work that you're doing uh, to bring in these, these animals into our homes. Um, this would not be possible with amazing volunteers. And I just want to name uh, the Blockhead Brigade, uh, Helen Sanders, Pat Cause, Live Love Animal Rescue, the Little Lion Foundation, the Friends of Long Beach Animals, uh, uh, Pity professors. Uh, these are some of the see. There's some of the groups that are working with animal care and our team to get these animals fostered and adopted. And so we just want to thank all of you. There's still a couple, uh, some cats and dogs at the shelter. So please contact the shelter uh, if you are if you are able to. Um, and and uh, and finally, again, there uh, for those that are asking how to help, we added this weekend um, a how a how to help and volunteer link at the longbeach.gov COVID-19 website. Uh, you can click on there and you can learn how to help, how to donate, how to join the medical core uh, that we have as a volunteer system. Um, and so please, everyone just pitch in. And we keep saying these next two weeks are the critical weeks, and that's because they are. And so we need everybody on board to, to get us through these next few weeks. Uh, and with that, I want to turn this over to San Sandy Wedgworth. Um, I was with Sandy earlier this morning uh, we were uh, discussing our emergency operations uh, all across the city and emergency response. And she, um, uh, she actually uh, should be in, in large part her and her team credited with creating our uh, rapid response clinic um, at Long Beach City College. And it's her and her team that are doing that. And I want to turn it over to her. And we're very grateful to her work. So, Sandy. Thank you so much, Mayor Garcia. Um, as Mayor Garcia mentioned, um, we've had several positive cases at five long-term care facilities here in the city. Um, we're working closely with these facilities to assist with contact investigations and ensure infection control measures are being uh, made in order to prevent further spread of the virus. Um, because the investigation and infection control activities um, the health department asks of the facilities is very labor intensive and time consuming, there will now, uh, moving forward, be a, uh, at least a 48-hour lag time in communicable disease control program reporting the names of these facilities to the media and to the public. Uh, we want to make sure that these facilities are able to focus on the crucial prevention and mitigation measures necess uh, uh, necessary by each new case and that they have enough time to inform family members, residents, and staff um, of these new cases. Uh, first responders will continue to be provided pertinent information in order to facilitate PPE requirements. Um, and as the mayor also mentioned, we have taken um, several steps to prepare for a surge in medical patients in Long Beach. So um, as he mentioned, we have set up medical tents um, outside of emergency rooms at uh, Long Beach Memorial Medical Center. St. Mary Medical Center and College Hospital. And we are providing medical, um, and in those tents, they are providing medical assessments and triage for individuals displaying mild to moderate symptoms of COVID-19. 
Um, those tents are also uh, available to uh, facilitate uh, if they need to be used for uh, overflow of, of beds in those tents. So uh, that will be up to the hospitals to decide if they need to do that. And um, the field hospital that was set up inside the Long Beach Arena with medical supplies has a, uh, right now uh, 100 cots um, and it's ready to be activated if needed in order to remove pressure from the area hospitals should they become overwhelmed. And we're working closely with all of our hospitals to assess their needs. Um, and of course, we're very excited because uh, starting today, our rapid assessment clinic uh, began providing the medical assistance to people who might otherwise uh, feel compelled to visit an emergency room for their conditions. Um, and so our, our desire was to help uh, provide them with an option other than an emergency room to um, take care of their needs. So the clinic is located at the Long Beach City College Pacific Coast Campus, and it will operate 10, from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. seven days a week until further notice, as Mayor Garcia mentioned. Um, people who arrive at the clinic and have flu-like symptoms such as cough, fever without rash, um, sore throat, or similar flu-like symptoms are going to be evaluated on site. Um, and to, uh, the medical staff there will evaluate those patients and determine their need for testing for COVID-19. Um, and again, as the mayor mentioned, starting tomorrow, um, April 7th, we will be offering the drive-through testing to those who need it. Um, and the portal, uh, the portal that the mayor mentioned includes some pre-screening questions. Um, so we will continue to prioritize testing individuals who are symptomatic who have underlying health conditions or who are 65 years and older. Um, the test results uh, will take approximately 48 hours to process. So individuals who go through our drive-through testing um, and if their test results come back negative, they will be informed via a letter in the mail. Uh, individuals who's uh, who um, uh, end up with positive test results will receive a phone call from a case investigator at the health department. Um, the rapid assessment clinic also sees patients not experiencing flu-like symptoms on a walk-in basis. So no appointment would be needed. Um, physical distancing measures are in place um, at the clinic. And, um, and uh, even though these patients will need to get out of their cars to assess care. So for those who are coming in for anything other than COVID-19 testing, they would walk up to our medical tent set up at the uh, the college. Um, patients can obtain assessment and treatment for common ailments such as earaches, um, things like eye infections like pink eye or urinary tract infections, things that might um, require that the person be prescribed like an antibiotic. We are able to facilitate that. They can also obtain and renew common prescription medications such as um, renewal for, uh, for oral contraception, uh, medications for hypertension, for um, ga uh, gastroesophageal reflux disorder, for thyroid issues, for cholesterol, diabetes, um, depression, and allergies. Uh, people needing prescription renewals are urged to bring a list of their current uh, medications or they can just bring their, their pill bottles and um, if they have them and we can um, uh, provide refill uh, prescriptions based on that. Um, free parking is available on the campus lot near Orange Avenue, north of Pacific Coast Highway. Signage and staff is present to direct individuals to the appropriate area when they arrive on, um, at the site. Um, and as the mayor mentioned as well, we, uh, we've had uh, at least 50 people come through already. So we are very excited that we were able to provide this additional service to the community. And um, the average time that folks are spending in the, the tents uh, is about 10 minutes. So we, we really are um, uh, staying uh, true to our rapid you know, we said we would do rapid, and that's what we're doing. Um, and we're likely not—we're uh, likely not going to be offering daily reports on the number of people seen by the clinic uh, moving forward. Um, we will try to get that information out to, to keep the community updated. Um, our team's priorities are doing what we can to slow the spread of this virus and make sure our city has the medical capacity to handle a surge. But as often as we can, we will provide numbers um, with a with the city. 
And that being said, we will continue doing our best to provide timely and transparent information to all of you. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. And, and now to uh, give us a summary of, of what we discussed, uh, this is Leslie Gama, who will do it in Spanish. And uh, thank you, Leslie. Yeah. Um, buenas tardes. Algunos de los temas claves que el alcalde Roberto García de Long Beach mencionó en inglés es que el Departamento de Salud y Servicios Humanos hasta ahorita ha reportado 230 casos positivos de COVID-19. De estos um, 230 casos, 71 personas ya se han recuperado. Desafortunadamente, hemos empezado a ver casos en los centros de cuidados a plazo largo donde viven muchas personas que son vulnerables están en alto, y también están en alto riesgo de contraer el virus. Desde el sábado por la tarde, cinco de estos centros han tenido personas las cuales salieron positivas con COVID-19. Seguimos actualizando a los medios y al público si hay más casos reportados. También el alcalde habló de la clínica de evaluación rápida. Después de esto, um, de que los números de COVID-19 subieron, um, se vio la necesidad de hacer otros uh, tipos de medidas para ayudar a la comunidad. Por lo mismo, la ciudad de Long Beach ha activado la clínica uh, de respuesta rápida. Estos servicios son gratuitos y serán tipo autoservicio o como se dice en inglés, drive-through. Este servicio proporcionará evaluaciones a cualquier persona con síntomas similares a los de la gripe, como es la tos, la fiebre, y el dolor de garganta. Las evaluaciones gratuitas se llevarán a cabo de 10 de la mañana a 6 de la tarde. Los siete días de la semana en el colegio Long Beach City, que se encuentra en la Pacific Coast Highway y la Orange, la PCH y la Orange. Dependiendo de sus síntomas, puede ser que le hagan una prueba de COVID-19 ahí mismo o lo manden a otro lugar. Esperamos que este servicio ayude a aliviar al número de personas que estamos viendo en los hospitales y en las salas de emergencia. La clínica estará integrada por el Cuerpo de Reservas Médicas de Long Beach. Es un grupo de profesionales médicos voluntarios de la comunidad. De antemano, les agradecemos a este equipo por todos sus servicios. También mencionamos um, lo que es cubrirse la cara. Es recomendado um, que si va a salir a hacer sus uh, compras esenciales o si tiene que trabajar, se cubre um, el rostro. De preferencia, por favor, no usen las máscaras um, cirúrgicas que son para los doctores y las enfermeras. Les pedimos que se queden en su casa. Um, eso quiere decir que no pueden salir a la playa, no pueden salir con sus amigos en grupos, en bicicletas, um, no tienen que estar en grupos. Um, si es permitido que puede caminar por su vecindario, pero nada más caminar, no pueden congregarse. También les recordamos que tirar basura sigue siendo un delito. Ha habido informes de mascarillas, cubrebocas y guantes de plástico que han sido usados y um, los cuales han sido desechados en la calle. Les pedimos que tengan en cuenta la salud de los empleados que están limpiando nuestras calles adecuadamente y día con día. También um, nos mencionó el alcalde que las mascotas um, se notó un apoyo muy fuerte de la comunidad durante esta pandemia de COVID-19. 70 perros y 103 gatos fueron adoptados recientemente o acogidos en, uh, en hogares de servicios de cuidado de animales desde el marzo 13. Además de esta asombrosa muestra de amabilidad y compasión hacia nuestros animales, también estamos viendo muestras de caridad entre nuestros um, vecinos y más personas están dispuestas a donar sangre y una gran cantidad de donación al Fondo de Ayuda de Long Beach. Um, Sandy, uh, que es la directora del Programa de Emergencia de Salud Pública en el Departamento de Salud, um, nos volvió a confirmar que sí fueron cinco uh, centros de salud uh, a cuidado largo plazo, uh, los cuales uh, reportaron casos positivos de COVID-19. Estamos trabajando fuertemente en colaboración con estas instalaciones para ayudar con las investigaciones de contactos y garantizar que se tomen medidas de control de infección para evitar la mayor propagación de este virus. Queremos asegurarnos de que estas instalaciones uh, puedan enfocarse en las medidas cruciales de prevención y mitig mitig mitigación necesarias para cada nuevo caso. Eso también dará tiempo para que las instalaciones puedan informar a los familiares de estas personas. Agregamos que los socorristas continuarán recibiendo información suficiente para facilitar que usen equipo de protección personal cuando es necesario. Hemos tomado medidas 
para el despliegue de expertos y personal humanitario especializado en este tipo de respuestas. Este grupo de especialistas um, han, sido estable han establecido carpas en diferentes hospitales en, el, en la ciudad de Long Beach, incluyendo Long Beach Memorial, St. Mary's y College Hospital. Um, esta, y están proporcionando evaluaciones médicas para personas que presenten síntomas leves de, o moderados de COVID-19. La instalación del Field del Hospital que está dentro de la arena de Long Beach uh, tiene suministros médicos y aproximadamente 100 camillas. Este hospital está listo para ser activado si es necesario para ayudar a aliviar los hospitales locales. A partir de hoy, um, la clínica de evaluación rápida, um, Sandy nos dijo que, uh, que harán pruebas uh, de evaluación rápida, deberán hacer y, y tienen que asegurarse que hagan una cita a través del portal de nuestro sitio web. Al uh, el, el sitio web va a aparecer muy pronto. El portal incluye algunas preguntas de pre, uh, preselección. Continuaremos dando prioridad a las personas que presentan síntomas, que tienen problemas de salud preexistentes o que tienen 65 años de edad o más. Los resultados de la prueba tardan aproximadamente 48 horas en procesarse. Las personas cuyas pruebas resulten negativas serán informadas a través del correo. Si su, si su prueba uh, regresa siendo positiva, recibirán una llamada telefónica de los investigadores del Departamento de Salud. Las pacient uh, los pacientes pueden obtener evaluación y tratamiento para dolencias comunes como dolores oí um, de oído o infecciones urinarias. Um, la clínica que, que le estábamos diciendo que está um, puesta en el colegio de Long Beach uh, va a tener un drive-thru donde pueden hacer sus um, Uh, su examen de, uh, de COVID-19 si es que uh, uh, hizo su cita y si es que califica para hacer ese, esa, esa prueba. También al lado, ahí mismo va, van a haber servicios donde les pueden dar uh, uh, medicamentos recetados comunes como anticonceptivos orales y medicamento para la hipertensión, problemas de tiroides, colesterol, diabetes, depresión y alergias. Se recomienda a las personas que necesitan uh, uh, asegurarse de que traigan sus, uh, sus frascos de pastillas para que estas personas puedan ver cuál, qué medicamentos están tomando. Hasta ahorita hemos uh, recibido aproximadamente 50 personas a, la, a través de la clínica de evaluación rápida. Es probable que no ofrezcamos informes diarios sobre la cantidad de personas atendidas por la clínica. Las prioridades de nuestro equipo es hacer que podamos um, frenar la propagación de este virus y asegurarnos de que nuestra ciudad tenga la capacidad médica para manejar un aumento repentino. Dicho esto, continuaremos haciendo todo lo posible para proporcionar información al público. Y también quiero decir, uh, Leslie, si, si tú eres alguien en la comunidad uh, que no tiene documento um, y no eres ciudadano, esta clínica puede ir a la clínica. Si no tienes aseguranza, puede ir a esta clínica. Eso, eso es bien importante para la comunidad también um, que ese es un lugar que, uh, que está ahí en la PCH, en el, en, el, en el college, Long Beach City College, y tú puedes ir con tu familia, uh, si no tienen aseguranza, es un lugar um, seguro para usted. Ok, mucho so, por favor, gracias. And I want to thank everyone for, um, uh, for watching. Our next update will be uh, Wednesday at uh, 3 p.m. Mayor Garcia, uh, there's a lot of questions uh, that we're receiving on Facebook right now relating to masks, and maybe you and or Sandy could comment on why are we encouraging people to wear masks, and why, what's the value of the masks that people are wearing? Well, there's a lot of questions about masks not working for COVID-19. Can you clarify and elaborate on that, please? Well, I think uh, the, the Long Beach Health Department and Sandy uh, can add if I can get anything. Uh, the Health Department is following some of the CDC recommended guidelines that have been put out by uh, the federal government, as well as what's being put out by the state. The state currently is not requiring uh, that folks wear uh, masks, um, but they, there's certainly an encouragement that it's an additional layer to keep people safe. And so I think our health department guidelines uh, that we have put out as it relates to facial coverings are that surgical masks, medical masks are reserved for those in hospitals and first responders and nurses, uh, a scarf, a homemade face covering, a cloth, uh, those are encouraged when someone leaves the house, if they have to leave the house. And I don't know if you even want to add to anything. Yeah, so um, the the cloth face masks are, are a good way for people who maybe are asymptomatic, not showing any symptoms, but could potentially still be spreading when they do go out to, um, to get food or, or for essential services. Um, 
it does uh, create a, a level of protection where it's not protecting you, the wearer of the mask, but it's protecting um, the, the community so that it, in, in the event that you are one of those folks who could be spreading without symptoms, that it's, it's helping to keep your, um, uh, you from spreading it into the community. So that's why that's really important. It's to really to provide um, that layer of protection. Um, and um, and as, the, as the mayor said, it's really important that we uh, uh, keep the surgical masks and the N95s for the frontline staff healthcare workers. So if you are just going out to the grocery store, you can make your own mask. Um, you, there's a, a great um, tutorials online. Um, you can get really creative with them, but it really is uh, primarily for those people who may not be having symptoms to um, to keep them from potentially spreading unknowingly the virus into the community. Okay, and I think that was the uh, the main question we had today. And so with that, I'm gonna we're gonna wrap up. And thank you again, and we'll see you on Wednesday.